Welcome to SurveyMaker, creating a sectional title plan, part 1. In part 1, we will cover how to calculate the sectional title plan in four easy to follow steps. Open project and ground floor plan, add points, creating the first floor, copy second and third floor, plus numbering. In the second video, part 2, we will continue to cover the rest of the steps. The building example we use consists of a block layer, exclusive use layer, ground floor, first floor, second floor, and third floor. We also have some additional information, and the complete building looks like this. Let's start with point 1, Open Project and Ground Floor Plan. Use our demo files located in the SurveyMaker demo folder or use your own project. We will start preparing the CAD that we use in the second clip on creating a sectional title plan part 2. Browse to your file and open the project. Select the display button on the top menu. This gives you the ability to change the visibility of all the CAD layers. A quick way of selecting, invert the selection to hide all the layers and then display only the ground layer, the building ground floor. To change the layer before you draw new CAD is optional. We will show you how to change existing CAD at the end of this session. Select the CAD line attributes, set the correct CAD layer pin, line type and thickness for the ground floor plan CAD lines. Do the same with the text attributes, set the CAD layer font, pin, width and height for the ground floor plan text. Select the Crimp Polygon button. Indicate your cursor inside the CAD building area. We use this function to crimp the ground floor plan lines to the center of the wall. Type in the name of the CAD layer of the new polygon. Type the polygon label text that will be the description of the polygon. Enter the distance to crimp the polygon to draw the lines in the center of the wall. Untick the crimp the polygon in place. This gives you a copy of the crimped result on your cursor. Move the CAD next to your existing layout of the working plan. With the free snap mode active, left click to place the CAD. Right click and cancel to exit the command. To navigate the CAD screen, do the following. Click the mouse wheel button to move the clicked cursor position to the middle of the screen area. To pan, click and hold the mouse wheel button while moving the mouse. Roll the mouse wheel forward and backward to zoom in and out. Point 2. With add points, we calculate and add the inside taped points on lines. Go to Calculations, Cadastral, Calculate Points on Line. Change your snap mode to Line Endpoint so that we can work from the line coordinates. Click in the points name field on the first input, commanding the function to send data to this input box by means of the snap mode. Indicate the first and second point with the line endpoint snap. Type the point name and distance for the first point in the line and then press enter to add the point. Repeat this for all the measured distances along the selected line. When finished, press Calculate. On the prompt for a missed closure, do you want to adjust the calculated points? Before the new points are saved, the program calculates the distance from the last calculated point to the second terminal of the line and gives the option to adjust the data with the missed closure. We do not need to adjust our points as we didn't give a final measurement to the second terminal of the line. Repeat these steps for all the lines to calculate. 
If you cannot see the points, make sure the DTM display is on. To hide the calculation window on the right of the screen, use the arrow. To display it again, move your cursor to the right of the screen, select the cross to exit the window. Use the two point line method to draw lines between the points using the DTM snap. To quickly get the line properties from an existing CAD line, holding your mouse cursor close to a line and then press the delete key on the keyboard. The line will flash to show you the line selected and then on the line attributes menu the line properties change to match the line you selected. We draw the lines with the same line properties of the ground floor plan. Add new points with the DTM point shortcut on the edge of the polygon. Use the line endpoint snap, select the first point and enter the name of the first point in the sequence of points. To generate the next point name, we select the increment number and suffix settings as found around the code input box. The increment number will increase the numeric part of the point name for each new point and suffix tells the program the number that should be increased is at the end of the point name. Notice on the next point that the program now increments the point name automatically. Do this until the whole figure has DTM points placed on all the relevant positions. Using the quick button rather than OK will just add the points without showing the pop-up after each point. This makes it a lot quicker to add the points. That's it for point two, add points. Let's move on to point three, creating the first floor. Select display, hide the ground and ground floor layer and display the first floor layer that we are now going to work with. Only displaying the layers we are working with makes it a lot easier to work with the CAD data on the screen. CAD attributes, set the line pin text pin, width and height on the correct settings to create the first floor polygon for both the line and text. Use the layer name first floor plan for the line and text. Now we follow the same steps to calculate the first floor polygon as we did when we calculated the ground floor polygon. Remember to make your snap mode free when you place the cat. Escape and cancel to go out of the previous command. The encircled lines are service shafts and they need to be crimped to the opposite direction of the main polygon. Use the line add parallel function to place new lines parallel to the original lines. Like before, I hold the cursor next to the line and press delete to get the properties from that existing line. To indicate the new line's position, click on the side of the original line that you need the new line to be. Type the parallel distance and press OK. If you made a mistake, Ctrl plus Z deletes the last CAD command or use the undo shortcut on the left menu. With the free snap mode active, use the trim the CAD lines shortcut to trim the lines onto the selected baseline.
activate the line endpoint snap, use the move line endpoint shortcut to move the existing line endpoints to the new endpoint. Use the CAD line delete shortcut and delete the redundant lines from the figure. Alternatively, with the CAD line meet shortcut, meet the lines at the corners. This replaces both the CAD trim and move line endpoints commands. Let's calculate the rest of the points using the points on line function just as we did with the ground floor plan and then connect the CAD lines to form the sections of the first floor plan. For the sectional title we do not need to add the points on the second and third floors, we only added the points on the first floor to draw the taped lines. Now we have the finished ground floor plan and the first floor plan, calculated using the steps as we discussed up until now. Let's continue with step 4, copy second and third floor plus numbering. On the display we only display the first floor and ground floor plan. Turn the DTM display off. To ID elements, hold down the shift key on your keyboard. Left click and release the top left corner and if you want to select the rectangle block of data, just move your cursor to the bottom right corner and then release your shift key. In the pop-up on the left side of the window, you can choose the type of elements to include as part of the selection. And also if you want to select the items inside or outside the defined area. On the right side of the window, an overview of the number and type of selected elements are displayed. Check the points box and the DTM data will also be copied. The ID elements will turn red to show you your selection. Select the ID elements, copy to create a copy of the selection so that we can duplicate the selection. Select a base point on the identified CAD and place a copy of the selected elements by moving them to the position you want to place them using your snap modes. Place two copies of the selection, one for the second floor and one copy for the third floor plan. Change the description of the CAD layer of the CAD text above each plan to the correct description of the floor. To number the selection, check and make sure the CAD text attributes are set to the correct settings for the section we want to add the text to. Preferably use log5, not log1 as I did in the illustration. Use the earth numbering tool to number all the sections very quickly 
using the generate earth numbers using a line path. Give the number of the first section so that the program has a number to start numbering from. Then using the free and snap mode, draw a line starting inside the earth from the first section you want to number across all the sections in sequence, ending inside the last section to number. Using the CAD ID function, select all the CAD elements linked to a floor and move all the elements onto the final layer for that floor. Now using the ID elements, manipulate selection, move the elements to the correct layer. Repeat the steps for all the floors. This will then eliminate mistakes if you forgot to set the layer names correctly in any of the previous steps. For an irregular area selection, click the first point and sequentially click all the points around the area and then release your shift key. We are finished with part 1, thank you for watching. Please watch how to create a sectional title urban file in part 2 of this series.